Hi everyone, Ryan here, and I want to show you something very neat. So, since the Raspberry Pi came out, especially since the Raspberry Pi Zero came out, making a Game Boy Portable has been something the DIY community has always been trying to achieve. And they've gotten really close, but this product by Retroflag is the GPI case, and well, it's the best thing on the market you can get to make a consoleized portable or Game Boy replica portable for your Raspberry Pi Zero or Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, this thing is about a Game Boy Color size, running at 9 ounces with three AA alkaline batteries. It's a little bit heavier than a Game Boy Color by a few ounces, but if you compare that to the original Game Boy with four AA alkaline batteries, it's a little bit lighter. It's also smaller form factors compared to the original Game Boy, and that's just because it's as big as that needs to be. It does have two extra face buttons. The start and select are actually rubberized just like the original. And on the back, although they're awkward as hell to get to and actually use, there's two shoulder buttons that are tactile buttons. The start and select feel great. The D-pad is pretty good. Um, but how about is that screen? So the screen on this is, is an IPS screen. It's very responsive, very fast. And you're looking at a 10X view of the Genesis emulator running in RetroArch. So I'm not going to talk about the emulation. We're all familiar and we can find emulation standards for the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, but this is what the screen looks like. It's fully backlit with a contrast button on the side to give you adjustable brightness values. And whenever my phone feels like focusing, the screen is, well, it speaks for itself. It's very nice. Pixels are nice and square. Image is crisp and clean. And honestly, I have no complaints. You get the case, you just have to essentially insert or install your Raspberry Pi, but in a solderless method. So we'll get to that really quickly. I'll just let you enjoy the nice clear viewing of what this screen looks like, because that's probably the biggest struggle is sourcing a screen, getting it to work, and having it look good in the final product. You get this nice play it loud stylized box, and in the box is everything you need minus the Raspberry Pi and SD card. You also get this power cable too, since it is a power hungry device, which we'll look at a little bit further. Well, let's talk about how to assemble this thing. You will need a Raspberry Pi Zero, and I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi Zero W, primarily because when we put this thing in the pseudo cartridge, we have no access to another HID USB port. So the wireless capabilities really help us load ROMs and so on. So the way this case works is you put the Raspberry Pi in this little cartridge and then that cartridge plugs in to the back of the GPI case. All the input output screen and data streams from the Raspberry Pi are actually transferred through this edge connector on the cartridge and they're pulled off the Raspberry Pi with these pogo pins. Hence the solderless assembly or solderless connection. So it's really neat. Um, even for $10, you don't have to commit your Raspberry Pi to essentially any install with this because, well, there's no soldered connection. In theory, you could have multiple cartridges with multiple configurations on them, but I don't see anything on, G on Retroflags' website to sell extra cartridges. Assembly starts with this ribbon cable connector that plugs into the power connection of the Raspberry Pi. Then you mount the Raspberry Pi with the included brass standoffs to the top face side of this cartridge, the side that has the artwork on it. Next you'll put the pogo pin PCB face down so it's touching the Raspberry Pi GPIO headers. Connect the ribbon cable and if the SD card protector cover fell out, insert that now. Then you'll put the top on and fasten with the included screws. Everything lines up pretty well, but when I put the cover on, it snapped in place, screws went in with no issue, threads were nice. So I haven't had any misconnections on those pogo pins or anything, so I'm happy with it. When you insert your SD card, or before that, we have a little bit of file prep to do, and I'm just going to briefly touch on that for the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Since again, we don't, we can't connect a keyboard to this, so it's has this Wi-Fi credential setup has to be done first. So the way you set up your SD card is go to RetroPi.org, download the Retro, I'm sorry, download the Raspberry Pi Zero image, mount that to your Raspberry Pi, 
go to the RetroFlag website under support, you're gonna download the GPI case zip, unzip this and drag this folder to the root directory of your SD card with RetroPie on it. Go into this folder and double click the install patch and then you'll get a little prompt on your computer saying the patch is complete. To do Wi-Fi stuff, we need to add a little text file to the root of this SD card called Wi-Fi key file and edit that file like the following, keeping the quotes and put your network name and password credentials in here. That way we can just go through RetroPie Wi-Fi setup, find this file, it'll plug in those credentials and you'll be connected to Wi-Fi. Um, there is an extra patch for the safe shutdown, so when you hit the power switch on the GPI case, it does the shutdown script, uh, but you can do that on your own. I just wanna talk about this thing because it's obviously very neat. And power this thing on. Startup is a little slow, it's a Pi 1. There are ways to speed that up. Uh, you can hide the boot and everything, but I wanted to look at how much power is this screen actually consuming. So I rigged up my fake battery connected to my power supply. And you can see at low brightness, we're at around 350 milliamps. And at maximum brightness, we're at about half an amp. So depending on what batteries you're using, AA batteries alkaline have a pretty high capacity, but their discharge is kind of weird. Most people are reporting with this case they get about three hours of use, and I'm at the three hour mark as far as having this thing on and idle for shooting this video. You can, you know, put a lithium ion battery here, make an adapter, but just having three AA's, you know, that's half of what the Game Gear used. We've come so far in 20 some years. Um, how can you not be impressed with this thing? It's, it's neat. So that's all I have to say about this. I mean, it, it looks as good as it does in video as it does in person. It, it's a very well tooled mold. It looks just like the Game Boy, even with the dot matrix screen window underneath the, the clear plastic. That's all there, all the details are there. It sounds fine. There's a little bit of static noise from the Raspberry Pi doing analog audio, but that's always been present with the Raspberry Pi 1 models. This, this thing is, it's great. I, I really like it. I know it's gonna be really hard to get on Amazon, so just be patient as far as getting it from Amazon. I know the eBay scalpers are gonna come once they get a hold of this case, and Retro, Retro Flag did make the previous uh, Nest Pi cases and the Mega Driver Genesis cases, which look really good. Their quality obviously still upholds. Just be patient, wait for this, wait for that first rush of demand to get satisfied. Once they spin up production, this will be available. Uh, but I did just want to make people aware of it. It's really nice. If you're looking for a Game Boy solution for your Raspberry Pi, go with this one. There's really nothing else close to it. So thanks for watching everybody. I will see you around. Not if I see you, no, okay, bye.